Hello again, honors students. Um, I have a lot of examples that I want to talk through this week, uh, which involve some concepts that we've already talked about, like the right hand rule, the production of magnetic fields, forces exerted by magnetic fields. Uh, but there's also a new concept called flux, which I'm going to explain, and then we'll we'll do some examples with that. Um, flux is the only new idea in the material for this week, and the rest of it is going to be more time to practice or review um, with the concepts from the last couple of, of assignments. Um, I'm going to try to go quick because there are roofers working on my house, and I don't know how long it's going to be quiet. Um, could be that they are taking a lunch break right now. But anyway, um, <clears throat> these are the two rules that we've talked about before. There is one rule that's about um, the magnetic fields that are created by electrical currents. And as in the diagram, the way you do that rule is that you let your thumb be the current. And whatever direction the current is going, you point your thumb that way. And then when you have your thumb pointed and you make a fist, the fingers of your hand sort of curl around, and that shows the direction of the field lines produced by that current. So currents make circular fields that go around the current. And then there's a second rule we've used for looking at magnetic forces. This rule has three parts instead of only two. So you begin with your entire hand pointing in the direction of the motion of the particle. Uh, so that could be just a single charged particle or it could be a current again. But you point your whole hand in the direction of that motion. Then you bend your fingers so that your fingers are pointing in the same direction as the magnetic field. And this often requires turning your wrist around or having your elbow sticking out in a funny way or something like that. But you need to figure out how to maintain both that original direction for the motion and also the direction of the magnetic field. And then your thumb, in that case, is the force that's felt by the particle or the wire. OK, <clears throat> so new concept It's called flux. Um, flux is based on. The word flux is based on like a Greek root, I think Greek, not Latin, uh, relating to flow. And you can think of flux literally as being the amount of stuff that passes through a particular area. So I've drawn a diagram here with a uniform magnetic field that points up. And I have a little rectangular area A. And depending on which way that area is facing, different amounts of field will pass through it. And flux is just a way of calculating that, basically. How much field passes through or penetrates this area. And you can think of it as a flow. There's not actually anything flowing in a magnetic field, but you can think of those lines as being like some sort of a fluid passing through space. So the intensity of the magnetic field, B, is related to the density of those lines, just like with electric fields. The stronger the field is, the denser the lines are. So the amount of flux through an area definitely depends on B. It also depends on A, because if the area is really big, then you're going to get more lines passing through it. And it depends on this angle, theta. Notice that theta is measured with this vector I've labeled A. This is an area vector. So the direction that it points is normal to the actual area. And the magnitude of the vector is equal to the area. Um, so you just have to keep that in mind, that the vector associated with the area is perpendicular to that area. So mathematically, it looks like this. The symbol we use for flux is a capital phi or phi, some people say phi. Calculate it by doing B times A times cosine theta, where again, theta is this angle between the magnetic field vector and the area vector. 
And you might recognize that expression as actually being a dot product between these two vectors, the B vector and the A vector. We saw dot products earlier this year when we were studying work. Work is a dot product between force and displacement. Uh, because of the cosine, flux could be positive, negative, or zero. It becomes zero when the angle theta is 90 degrees, as in this third diagram here. And if I were to keep uh, like rotating the area so that the area, area vector pointed down, uh, that would represent a negative flux because the magnetic field is going like the opposite direction of the area vector. The name of the unit for flux is the Weber, and it's equal to one Tesla times a meter squared. So that's Tesla is the unit for B, meter squared is the unit for A. And we'll be doing a lot with flux in the next uh, assignment, but what is usually important with flux is changes in the value. So like the rate of change over time is what you typically care about. Um, so all of the flux related questions or most of the flux questions you see this week are gonna be about uh, whether the flux is changing or not in which way it's changing. Cause that's the important part when we get into um, electromagnetic induction. All right, <clears throat> so here's a relatively simple example. I have this square wire loop. It's immersed in a magnetic field. You can see that the magnetic field is pointing out of your screen. And it says that the field becomes weaker over time. What happens to the flux? So I've represented the weakening field by spreading the lines out. Again, like I said before, the density of the lines is proportional to the strength of the field. So if the field's getting weaker, that means the lines are spreading out. Um, so hopefully just by glancing at it, you can tell that the flux has decreased. There are fewer field lines, there's fewer dots inside the loop after the field weakens. So you can think of it purely visually like that if you want to. You can also think about it in terms of that formula. It was B times A times cosine theta. So if B goes down because the field's getting weaker, then the flux also is gonna go down. Okay, I have basically that same magnetic field now, but this time my loop of wire is moving. So it's partly inside the field, partly not in the field, but it's getting pushed further and further in. What happens to the flux? Well, as this loop moves into the field, um, there are going to be more and more of those dots, more and more of those field lines uh, passing through the loop. And that means the flux of the loop is going to be increasing, at least until the loop is completely inside. Once the loop reaches a spot like this, at that point, continuing to move doesn't actually change the number of field lines that go through it. But later on, when the loop leaves the field, so it looks like the field stops right here. As the loop is moving out of the field, uh, then the flux is going to decrease. <clears throat> so in this case, it initially increases. And you can think of that as an increase in the area, since we only care about the part of the area that overlaps with the field. Um, but once that area reaches its maximum, then the flux will be constant until it leaves. Example three, this time, magnetic field points straight up. And I have a loop of wire again, but we're looking at it edge on. So like, instead of being able to see the whole rectangle, you're just looking at the edge and it is spinning. So it's rotating um, while staying in that same location. What happens to the flux? Well, again, if you think about it visually, you can probably tell that when this line flattens out, um, it's going to be catching more of the field lines. Right now, this particular line doesn't pass through the loop. But as soon as the loop flattens out, that line will go through it. So that means that at this moment, at least, the flux is increasing. 
You can also think about that in terms of the cosine in the formula. Here I've drawn in the area vector. So there's some angle theta between the area vector and the B vector. Um, but based on the way it's rotating, that angle is getting closer to zero. Cosine of zero is one. So the cosine is on its way up towards its maximum value. It means the flux is increasing at this moment. Example four, my wire loop is moving horizontally in this uniform field. What is happening to the flux? Well, the flux depends on magnetic field strength, but that's constant. It depends on the area of the loop. That's also constant. And it depends on the angle between the area and the magnetic field, but that is also constant here. And visually speaking, if you imagine that uh, that loop moving along across the screen, the field lines that pass through it are not changing. It's the exact same field lines. We're not getting more of them. We're not getting fewer of them. So in this case, there is no change in the flux. There is still motion. The loop is moving, but uh, the flux is not going to change. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to get a little trickier now. This one has a bar magnet being pulled away from the loop. I want to know about the flux through the loop. You could probably guess the second question, which is that the flux has to be decreasing since the further away you get from a magnet, the weaker the field gets. So if I'm dragging that magnet away from the loop, um, the field at the loop is going to be getting weaker. So that means the flux has to be decreasing in magnitude. Um, but what about the direction? For this, you have to remember the way the, the magnetic field of a bar magnet works. It has a dipole field with these curved lines. So the magnetic field lines come out from the North Pole, and then they bend around and re-enter at the South Pole. And then those lines continue the whole way through. But um, on this side of the magnet, all of those field lines are going to be pointing to the right because they come out of the North Pole before they bend around. So this is what part of the bar magnet's magnetic field looks like. I haven't drawn the whole field. That's what part of it looks like. And these field lines are going to the right. So the flux through the loop points right. And then, like I said, the flux is decreasing in magnitude because as you pull the magnet away, the field gets weaker. Number six, I have a straight wire carrying a current I to the right. And that current is getting stronger over time. All right, first of all, what direction does the straight wire's magnetic field point in the interior of the wire loop? So we need to actually use one of our right-hand rules now. I'm talking about the field that's produced by the wire, so I want to use the production rule. That's the one where I let my thumb be the current. And that current needs to go to the right. And if the current is going to the right, my fingers circulate around the current this way. So above the wire, the magnetic field is coming out of the screen. So you would represent that with a bunch of dots. Below the wire, the magnetic field is going into the screen. You would represent that with some X's. So I'm going to draw that in. You can also see a nice uh, image of my hand there. So the flux through the loop goes into the screen in this case. And then the question also says the current increases over time. That means that the magnetic field produced by the current will also be increasing. And so the magnitude of this flux has to increase. So it goes into the screen and it's increasing. Number seven, two wire loops are arranged with one above the other. You're looking at them slightly in perspective. Uh, I'm going to use this 
plate. I happen to have a pizza plate right next to me. So rather than seeing the entire circle of it, you're sort of looking at them both edge on. So you're slightly above them and looking down. So like the bottom edge is the closer edge. And the upper edge is the further one. All right. What is the direction of the current in the lower loop? The lower loop has this battery. So you got to think back a little ways. What the heck does the battery symbol mean? Which side is which? On a battery symbol, the long side is the positive side. And current comes out of the positive side. So the current is going clockwise. OK. So this current that's flowing in that loop has to generate a magnetic field. The upper loop does not have a battery, so there's no current there, um, at least not necessarily. We'll talk about this more next week. But this current that's produced by the battery, it makes a magnetic field. And so that magnetic field has to pass through the other loop. The question I'm asking now is which direction, which way does the flux go? So we need to use the production right-hand rule again. Um, so you could choose, it's so difficult to do this. You could choose any part of the, uh, of the wire loop that you want. But for example, if I were to hold on to the bottom edge, which is where the current is going left, uh, we need to put my hand this way. So along the bottom edge of the loop, it's like that. So the interior of the loop is the top, top of the wire, since I'm talking about the bottom. Um, let me just show you the picture of my hand that I put in here already. So if I hold on to that right side of the loop um, with my thumb pointing in the direction of the current, which is coming basically out of the screen at that spot, my fingers circulate around the wire there like this. So on the inside, my fingers are going down. And so the field within this entire interior also goes down. On the exterior, the loop goes up. Again, you get like a dipole shaped field. So this field line is going to wrap around, come back. But we only care about the direction of the field on the interior. And last one, <clears throat> I'll have to use the forces rule this time. I have a horseshoe magnet, but I don't know which pole is which. This proton flies towards the magnet. And as it says, the proton is deflected out of the screen by the magnetic field. So it's flying along in this direction, but then a force is exerted on it to make it come straight out of the screen at you. So again, I'm going to have to use one of the force, I have to use the force rule. I know that the velocity, the motion of the proton is that way. I don't know which way the field goes. Usually we do the field second. And so you like twist your wrist until you get the field with your fingers, but I don't know which way the field goes. However, I do know the force. Remember, the force is my thumb, and I know that the force has to point out of the screen. So given the motion that way and the force this way, that means the magnetic field must go down. If the magnetic field points down, that means that the top pole is the north, and the lower pole is the south. Because again, Field lines come out of the North Pole, go into the South Pole. And here's my beautiful photo of my hand doing the same thing. All right, so now I know which way the magnetic field goes. So as the loop approaches, the flux through the loop is going to point down. And as it gets closer to the magnet, that flux will increase in strength. 
because just like with the bar magnet, the closer you are to it, the stronger the field is going to be. All right, I believe that's the last example. Uh, so again, the classwork for this week is all conceptual. You don't have, don't have to do any calculations of forces or flux, although you will have to think about the formulas a little bit in some of the questions. Um, but it's mostly uh, a lot of right-hand rule stuff and thinking about what circumstances can make flux change. Uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Have a wonderful week.